So this is a simplified version of a really classic geological map of the Isle of Wight. It's a great place for building up skills in map interpretation and cross-section construction. What we have is the coastline, of course, and we've got some various elevations on here that we can use to get an idea of the landscape. We can see how boundaries interact with some of the topography, these variations in the coastline, and their variations in outcrop width that we can use to get an idea of the orientation of layers. Let's put this together on an interpretation of this classic map. So, a place to start is to look at the key, where we go from oldest rocks to youngest. And let's see if we can identify where the oldest and youngest strata are on the map. Well, the oldest are quite easy to pick, they're these blues. We can see them lying here on either side of the island, presumably forming some kind of structure running through here. The youngest strata, the Oligocene, well, let's see. Well, they lie around here on this northern area, essentially between Newport and up to the north coast. So that's where the strata are generally distributed. The next thing we need to think about are what's the orientation of the strata in various places. Well, and we'll worry about this area here, labelled A, coming south from the town of Cowes. Worry about what the orientation through here is, and then down here. So the rocks around cows, we can see that the boundary of these units within the Oligocene V into the valley and back out again, implying that they dip southwards. So we can just mark that with a symbol like this, showing the strike and dip. I'll just go over that with a pen. So that gives an idea of the general trend of the strike and the dip direction, which is gently to the south. In area B, Everything here is quite narrow and running in a straight line across the countryside through here as these units come through. So presumably these are pretty steep. And I'll just simplify it and suggest that in this area, the rocks are vertical. And I'm going to just draw that with a mark like that, implying a strike like this, essentially vertical. We may modify this as we draw our cross section, but that will do for now. Then in the southern point, let's just move the map up a little bit so we can see. This is quite a complicated map pattern, wiggling around, suggesting the rocks are rather gently dipping, interacting with topography. And we can see from the map that the ground rises up to over 200 metres above sea level. So these are hilltops in here, going down to the coast. So these rocks are essentially rather gently dipping, or flat lying. If anything, they dip south because these rocks come down to the sea, either side of the town of Ventnor, suggesting they gently dip down this way towards the south. So I'll just mark this with a symbol like this, just to say these rocks are essentially gently dipping southwards. Now we need to put this information onto a cross section between X and Y across our map. So let's just rearrange our paperwork. So we've got the map at the top and we can draw a cross section down here. Okay, so let's try and draw the cross section through here. So we'll have a, a general section line running from north through here to south. And we'll just build in the idea that this is slightly elevated ground through here to allow for this outcrop pattern. So I'll just pull it away from sea level as we come up to the south like this and then down again. Just to give an idea for this topography in this region in here. Okay, so let's build in our dip information. So in the north, the dips are to the south. Something like this, very gently, some southerly dips in this northern area. When we get to Newport, let's put Newport on here. We'll float it in the sky, but let's just put that as where Newport is. As we pass Newport, we go out through these rocks again. So we go from the uppermost Oligocene, down through the Oligocene into Eocene rocks and through to the upper Cretaceous as we come south. So these rocks here are younging northwards from the upper Cretaceous through the Eocene into the Oligocene in this direction. In the north, 
the Jungian direction is to the south. So these rocks are the youngest of all and must be sitting in some kind of broad um, syncline in this sort of position here. So let's use that information and say that the rocks are going to come down like this. And we also saw that in this position the rocks are coming vertical. So as we go past Newport the rocks come up on end like this. So we found a fold structure in here, which is, I'll just sketch it through like this, which is a sin form inclined back down in this way, a steep southern limb and a very gentle northern limb. So let's continue the cross section south. We've crossed through this steep limb and we go through into the upper Cretaceous. As we come across this area marked with the box B, we're still very steep and we're still moving down stratigraphic section into these lower Cretaceous rocks here. So this section in here consists of a package of rocks that all are steep and young into the syncline in that direction there. I'm just going to pick part of this and just pick the um, as a marker, the upper Cretaceous, the green rocks. And I'll just put that in here for now. I'm not going to try and trace every unit around this structure, just some uh, particular ones. So we'll just put the upper Cretaceous in. And the upper Cretaceous presumably goes underneath this ground in here. So we'll just wrap around underlying all this area here. It never outcrops on the Isle of Wight, but let's just say that that is the upper Cretaceous coming around like that underneath our syncline in here. And then some of the other Cretaceous rocks, the lower Cretaceous, sitting adjacent to it. That's a bit messy. Let's just tidy that up a bit. And just colour it in. So this is our upper Cretaceous strata coming around, standing on end as it goes through this ground. So where else do we see these upper Cretaceous rocks? On the map. Well as we come down we go across this broad area in here which are lower Cretaceous, it's this sort of beigey colour, until we end up down here and we climb across the stratigraphy going up across all these units to the upper Cretaceous which lies on the hilltop. So I'm just going to put up here a little piece of upper Cretaceous which will colour in here like this which represents the hilltop here. It's an outlier surrounded by older rocks, as we can see on the map. So it doesn't take a huge leap of faith to realize that what's happening here is that these upper Cretaceous rocks come over something like this. With the younger strata eroded off even across the tops of this hill area, so we end up with a structure that's something like this. We can also take these other strata through and we can see that the rocks that lie on this hill area here, which are the other parts of the lower Cretaceous, presumably can also come over and dive down. Something like that, so that we end up with the beige rocks, which I'll just colour in, these beige materials just lying in here, which are the lower part, or towards the lower part, of the lower Cretaceous, forming a, an inlier on the cross section. It's not an inlier in reality, it's all this ground in here. So I'll just colour this in, so we can see going over the top, this layer, now eroded, of the upper Cretaceous. So we're getting our cross section working quite nicely now. Next then, we can put in the lowermost parts of the section, these blue rocks, which we see over here, which presumably lie in the core of this fold structure, steeply dipping on this northern flank. Again, very narrow outcrop trace of the beige unit, very broad beige area on this side. So presumably, just in the subsurface, we end up with something like this with the blue rocks, which I'll just, I'll just pick them all together as a blue package in the core of the fold, 
coming down in here, which represents the oldest strata on the Isle of Wight. So here's our cross section, just tidy it through. We can put these units coming right round in here. We can take all these around the fold, presumably. Simplest interpretation is the stratigraphy continues at depth and all these rocks simply come round the fold structure like this to create our cross section. We have our inclined uh, syn uh, syncline through here and our anticline axial surface coming through here. South, north, and a working cross section now through the map. So we can now take this understanding from the cross section back to the map. So let's see if we can trace out where this anticline runs on the map. And the axial trace is just at the edge of the very steep rocks. So presumably it comes through here on our, um, on our map and it's gonna run down through here like this, somewhere like that as our fold structure, presumably out through here. So that is our, our anticline, also an antiform. Now what's interesting about the map is that if we follow this trace along, it doesn't go to the other outcrop area of the lowermost lower Cretaceous rocks. We've got our blue ones over here. So these don't link up. And if we look at the map in this position, we can see that if we were to draw a cross section through here, we'd have the same sort of anticlinal structure with a steep northern limb, but this northern limb here doesn't join up with the northern limb there. So presumably we've got one fold coming in this direction, one anticline, and another one here, and they don't quite meet, they overlap. So let's just draw that on. So if we were to draw the trace of the fold coming in through like this, the anticline is coming through like that. To interpret this map pattern, then I'll put our pens on here with our crayons to represent the fold traces, one like this, one like this, and presumably they both plunge down towards one another. So the intermediate ground in here is where the fold layers come around to wrap over these two fold trends. So let's just complete that. This fold comes down here, plunges and plunges out into this direction. So the arrow shows the direction it's plunging. This other, this fold here, the more northerly strand of this antiform, presumably comes out through here somewhere and dives off and terminates somewhere like that and plunges off like this. And the intermediate ground where these two folds are overlapping, there is actually a broad synform or syncline somewhere through here which just is a local fold structure between these two major antiforms. This one's gonna die out, come through here and die out, so that away from the Isle of Wight, you've got a fold here and a fold here, and the Isle of Wight, the main part of it, is where the two folds overlap. So a simple look at a classic map to generate a cross-section and to understand the shape of these folds in three dimensions.